Does Pixar's newest movie, Elemental, deserve all the heat it's been receiving for the past half a year? No, not really. It's not great, though. If you've somehow been living under a rock for the past couple years, then you'd be shocked to find out that Pixar has been doing pretty dreadfully as of recent. Each new movie they release seems to be doing worse and worse. Folks have been trying to speculate as to why this is for a while now, like that because during COVID they started premiering their movies on Disney Plus it gave people the expectation to not want to see them in theaters. You know, as they'd be streaming soon anyways. And while sure that's probably partially true, I think the simple fact is their newer features just haven't been appealing to as wide of a market as they once did. Like look at Toy Story, Monsters Inc., The Incredibles, Ratatouille. These are films that appeal to general audiences everywhere, boys and girls of any age. But their newer releases target demographics that seem way more niche in comparison. Luca meanly appears to young boys. I can't imagine many of them then wanting to go and see Turning Red, never mind their dads. That's not a problem, and that's not to say that nobody in those demographics can enjoy them, but if the success of Puss in Boots can show us anything, I think it's that people are willing to go back to theaters to watch an animated movie. Through good word of mouth. And sure, I enjoyed Luca and Turning Red and even Elemental. It's safe to say that none of them have been blowing people away like the studio once did. I'm fine with that, honestly. Lightyear was a big boring slog fest that I didn't even make a video about because I fell asleep halfway through the thing and didn't wake up until the credits started rolling. So I'm cool with them doing some smaller scale films, if it means each of them has a creator's unique voice shining through. Just don't be surprised when they have to pair it alongside Toy Story 17 so they can keep the lights on. Anyways... Elemental, huh? I was not excited to see this at all, I did not care. I wasn't planning on watching it until I was working on my new ranking video for hours on end, and wanted to watch something that I at least didn't have to immediately write about. Here we are! <laughs> but after watching it, I gotta say, I was pleasantly surprised. I guess all the animosity we've seen towards it all year made me go in expecting the worst, but in actuality, I came out of it thinking... Yeah, it was fine. What do you mean? Not $50 fine, though. What happened to cinema prices? In Ireland, this shit would've cost £8, not 25 each. Elemental is a quirky little rom-com starring Ember, this fire lady who lives on the outskirts of Element City. Creative Neum. Her family moved there from... Get this... Fireland. Take you all day to come up with that one? The movie's main focus is surprisingly not on Ember meeting and subsequently falling in love with the water guy, Weed Ripple. Instead, it's actually on the relationship between Ember and her father. I forget his name. She works at his shop on the fire side of town, with the intent of fully taking over at once her father... Uh... That guy, I forget his name still. Caesar is being ready. Which has taken a while because she can't ever seem to get over her temper. She's always blowing up at customers. Get it? Fire. This all changes when she rages and blows up a pipe, which causes her to run into Weed, who has to help her fix the water coming down from Element City into her town, or else her father's whole store will be shut down due to health code violations. They really drive home how much the fire people are treated as second-class citizens, not being allowed in certain areas of Element City and constantly getting dirty looks from everyone due to them being... Fire. And I didn't really think this worked much as an allegory. It's fine in context to the movie, but they're clearly trying to pull some real-world correlations here. And while it didn't take me out of it or anything, I did keep thinking to myself, Yeah, fire does have the massive ability to fuck things over for everyone. It doesn't work that well in real life where the message is usually that we're all the same on the inside. Because here they literally are different. They are made up of different matter. Like, later on, when Ember's mom wants to get inside a building on the water side of time, she starts evaporating the security guard like, you're not doing much good for your image there, are you? Not a big deal, again, just something that popped in my head every now and then. Along with how easy terrorist attacks would be in this universe, especially on the Earth people, who don't really have any sort of advantage when compared to the powers of flying, fire, and water. Don't like someone? Get your friends together and flood them. Got a group of trees pissing you off? Go berserk and burn them all down. Simples. Really though, in context of the movie, they don't explore a lot of this world, so a lot of these questions are able to be avoided, which I was fine with. I was happy to see just how small scale it all was. The only real characters are Ember's family and Weed's family. You can tell how desperate they were for marketable characters when they started making merchandise of... Giel, who has maybe four lines in the whole thing. Or Claude. <laughs> yo, yo, yo! <laughs> If there was something I did wish for more of, it would have to be what the entire film was marketed around. And that's the growing relationship between Weed and Amber. Like, I was getting myself prepared for a full-on rom-com, but was shocked to see that the movie seems much more focused on Ember and her father. 
Weed is simply there as a driving force for her to start seeing more of the world. Near the end of the film, Ember realizes that she doesn't actually want to take over her father's store, but feels pressured into doing so because of everything her father sacrificed to get them here, leaving behind his family. And I like that, but I wish there was any indication of her not wanting this beforehand, because we've only watched her for the entire movie talking about how much she wants him to see her as ready so she can take over. Because of this, Weed doesn't really do much other than help Ember towards her goal, and it causes the section of the movie where we're meant to see them bonding and realizing they might actually love each other to feel super rushed. It goes by within a montage. There's not even scenes that actually make me care about them as a couple or even believe that they are one. The only scene I liked between the two of them was when they tried to touch for the first time. It was very sweet and the visuals only enhanced it. You know, at first I was a little weary of these character designs, especially weeds, everyone couldn't stop making fun of them when it was first announced. Along with the world just looking like Zootopia. But when you watch it on the big screen, it really does highlight how impressive this animation is. Even if I wish some more effort were put into the designs, like I'm pretty sure Ember is the only tall teenage fire person we see, and the trees and wind characters all blend together. I was also going to say the end of the big mandatory third act action climax was pretty good, where they have that moment in every single kids movie ever where you think one of the main characters has died, and so everyone huddles around mourning their death until they start to speak again or open their eyes. You can picture it in your head, you've seen it before. But that's when I realized that I don't buy these two as a couple at all. We get no time to actually see their relationship develop into something greater, because the film is much more occupied with the stuff between Ember and her dad. It would have been more generic, sure, but if anything, I was hoping it would have been more generic, playing into the tropes you'd expect from a rom-com. Where's the other love interests? Maybe there's another fire guy who wants to be with Ember, which her father likes more than weird because they're the same and so he has to prove himself or something. When the trailer showed Weed eating the hot food her dad made, I had assumed this would come from a scene where he's being invited over for dinner for the first time, and we see the awkwardness between the two interacting for a while. But no, he was pretending to be a health inspector in the store. Weed and her dad never really get to interact after this scene, yet suddenly by the end he approves of the relationship because he almost died for her. Seems like kind of a cheat, don't you think? Like, of course you'd have to like him now, or else he'd be a massive asshole. All we really get between the two, other than the touching scene and a quick montage, is him showing her some tree because she never got to see the flowers as a kid. Wait a minute. Why isn't this tree alive? They set it up with the beloved Claude character that trees can grow flowers, which must mean this tree was alive at some point, so... Does that mean they did the element equivalent of going to a graveyard and looking at a dead body? Cool. Either way, elemental. It was alright. Didn't love it, didn't hate it. I probably look at it the same way I do turning red, I have no desire to ever watch this thing again, but I enjoyed my time with it. Even if it was clear they could have done so much more. I can see why the movie is bombing though, although it definitely doesn't deserve to be Pixar's lowest ranking box office ever. I still think that medal should have been awarded to the good dinosaur. Fuck that movie. But Elemental clearly isn't working and I wonder what Pixar are gonna take away from that. Could this be the end of the what if blank had emotions genre they're famous for? Who knows? What I do know is, Elemental is a fine movie. I can see why people would really love it, but I also completely get if you want to wait for Disney Plus or to just avoid it entirely. I'm just waiting for when Pixar will have the balls to make their most groundbreaking movie yet. What if Irish people had emotion? 